the last time we spoke to you last summer, uh, just after promotion, there were plans at least being discussed about improvements to the training ground, etc. What's the latest on that? Yeah, I mean, definitely the whole point of the promotion for, to the Premier League for us is also looking at creating a legacy from it. And that's obviously improving the first team, but obviously improving the facilities around the football club as well. Without a doubt, we, we've highlighted that the first team building uh, at Shirecliffe needs needs improving, needs updating, etc. So we're in discussions as we currently speak and pretty close to finalising uh, a new first team building uh, to be built in the summer, which will hopefully be ready for uh, next season. And all the new arrivals that you're after in the summer. Yeah, fabulous. You know, as I said, we're not we're not uh, we're, we're we're not embarrassed about what happens at Shirecliffe. You know, it, in a way, it's it's spit and sawdust, and it, it, players are, are there to work uh, and to get their hands dirty. But uh, certainly, uh, in terms of uh, the intensity of the Premier League and recovery being key, and video analysis going through the roof, you know, these are certain things that that we need to keep pace with. Uh, and um, unfortunately, at, at this moment, you know, we're, it's, uh, we're struggling to hang on to the coattails when teams are spending the, 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 the numbers they are on training facilities. Mm. And this is a place to work as well. You know, we not only we're buying players that we feel first and foremost are good players, we, wanted to, we want to improve them as well uh, and improve them on all aspects of the game from a physical point of view. You know, from a technical and tactical point of view as well. So these things will attract players, I'm sure, um, and uh, and obviously the the boys will boys will will see the benefits in the summer and going into the next season. Do you look at say Sander Berger for example, and you've obviously spent a, a lot of money on him now. That two years from now, if he was obviously clearly was the subject of interest from elsewhere, you might be selling him for double treble what you paid for him. That type of thing is a really big saleable asset. I think we can't get away from the fact that, you know, first year in the Premier League, we want to keep all as best players. We want to keep the players that we've brought in. We want to keep the likes of, of Flake, Egan, uh, Lundstrom, Stevens, the boys that have that been on the journey, um, the Bashams and Norwoods right the way through. Um, but we understand as well that financially we have a ceiling um, that possibly isn't as big a, a, a ceiling as what quite a few of the clubs um, operate in the Premier League um, and we have to sometimes difficult to, uh, to to accept that there are bigger clubs out there and more famous clubs and more historic clubs that you know our ambitious players might want to go and play for so I'm not embarrassed about that um, we've always known that um, if players want to move then the negotiation starts. We won't hold them um, against their will, but obviously, from our point of view and Steve's point of view, then becomes um, the best price that we can that we can get for these players, because at times they might be doubling and trebling the salaries. And uh, um, unfortunately, at the moment, you know, we're not we're not in that ballpark. I, I know we touched on it in the most recent press conference but is anything imminent if you like with contract negotiations well I think that um, obviously now we've got January which was a, yeah. an unbelievably hectic week for us and amazingly how it all gets crammed into the last three or four days and it never surprises you but it always does absolutely nothing for three weeks a little bit of, of work going on then all of a sudden bang away everything goes and obviously it's you know it takes it's three people involved in the, in the, all the negotiations, buying club, selling club and player stroke agent, stroke family. But then it gets ramped up in the last three days. Uh, but now all our focus and is, is, is obviously on the other parts that we're talking about. Training ground, uh, academy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and most importantly, and I will say, and I've kept saying it, rewarding, rewarding the players um, for their performances in the first part of, of the first, first uh, Premier League uh, campaign and Steve if I may if I could just finish with you just for, for fact checking really the, the ownership battle has been and gone and the club are committed to purchasing the assets how will that be paid for is that something that has to go and be up front out of any sort of Premier League money Do you, will it be paid in instalments how will, how will that work um, the, 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 the deal itself is that it gets done by the, by the summer it's paid for by the club um, but ultimately Prince Abdullah 
owns the club and, yeah. and what money's required to, 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 to cover that if, if needed will, will, will come from him if it's not there within the club itself. Ultimately, every penny is down to him and, and how it's utilised. But I think you can see that the way he's gone about business and, and supported us so far, um, Chris and I don't have no complaints about, you know. Because fans will have fears that this, this yeah, the £50 million, pounds, where's the, which signings are going to get not get made because of this £50 million? Pounds? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I don't think they, they need to worry is the answer. I think, you know, Chris can vouch for it. I think, look what we've done January mm-hmm. when... We knew that was happening before January, so I think that shows the intent, uh, intent of the owner and the ball to to support Chris and the first team, without a doubt. And I, and I don't think that changes. I will always reiterate that it's done in a sustainable way, so that so that we're not boom and bust. And it's simple as that. It will be done properly, but nothing will change in terms of the support that the, the club and and the first team are given.